Hello there, Ray here, and guys, I have an amazing flying machine to show you guys. This is an easy way to remove not only large amounts of lava, but also blocks that are hidden underneath them. You guys can see the flying machines working in the background. They go back and forth, removing lava sources, moving all the blocks to one edge, and they are quite small too. You can see there's not that much blocks to build them up. This is by far the best way to remove lava sources after running your mini three-dimensional TNT query. If you guys are not sure what that is, that is a little machine that's only consists of 80 blocks. They actually removed all the blocks they see in this entire area. So I didn't actually dig all this. It was all removed by a flying machine. You can find that video linked below. And what I will be showing you guys is how to use this machine here, and how to build it up as it is extremely useful when making perimeters in Minecraft. Remember guys to watch the video to the end because 99% of the questions that you guys asked in the comments are answered in the video or in the description. These machines were designed by Cats Aztec as well as myself and we made them for our cat primer that we were building on the Protec SMP server. I have to say from experience these things are extremely useful in a survival situation. It saves you tons of hours from having to remove a lot of lava as well as blocks hidden underneath of them. And you guys might notice that last season on Hermitcraft Mumbo Jumbo had a lot of lava sources just like this in his perimeter and with this simple machine he could have had it all removed. And if you guys haven't already subscribed, less than 30% of you guys are subscribed so let's go ahead and try to boost that number up to at least 40%. So hit that subscribe button because I make tons of videos like this ranging from Minecraft exploits to both simple and complex machines that can be built up for your survival world. Now let's get into how this lovely machine works. So as you run the mini three-dimensional TNT query, it will expose any liquids kind of up high. So like water or lava that's really high, they'll just be single sources normally, or you can find like a lava lake. You want to go ahead and try to remove those as they're going to flow over and kind of protect the stone below it. So as you see them, try to remove them with either like a bucket. If you have a lot of iron, like iron farm, you can scoop them all up really easily. Otherwise you can use like sand to remove those sources. The down low ones is where there is the majority of the liquids. That is the lava down there and that's what this machine is really good at is removing those down low sources also if you happen to see any water make sure you remove it because it does create obsidian which just makes more work later on now you can go ahead and run this lava remover at the same time that you're running your query you just need to remember that you want to keep those minecarts in entity processing chunks so you don't want to go far enough away so you can't see them. Otherwise the minecarts will fall off and it won't dupe any TNT. I'll just keep going back and forth with no blocks being destroyed. If that happens you just need to stop it and put the minecarts back in again. So now we need to decide where to actually build up this contraption as it runs back and forth and then moves over one block back and forth and over one block. They wanted to kind of push all the blocks into some area that is may already be a bit messy like this area here. Pretty messy with lava. But the pushers can only push 12 blocks. If you decide to come in and push this direction, notice how there is a large amount of blocks underneath of this lava here. So if you look here, there's a lot of blocks. And since they're all in a row, it can't really push this long distance. So even though you can run this the same time you run the duper, it's probably best to just wait until it's finished. You kind of see which way is the best way to kind of take on the lava down below. So in this case, probably running the dupers back and forth this direction is the best, even though our flying machine is going this way. And by doing a little bit of planning ahead of time, you can save yourself a lot of work later on. So since I'm going to be working on one of the corners, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the worry. Just put a block there, we'll turn this off. Now I'll come in here and stop. When you're ready to start again, you just remove that block. Now we should be good to go to go ahead and work. I think we're going to build it in one of these corners. And we'll just assume that this perimeter is done, even though it's about halfway done. So we're gonna build the flying machine in this corner. It's going to go back and forth this way and then scoot over this direction. This way it's able to push the majority of that lava as well as blocks over there. I do have this little lava source that might be in the way of it. So I got in the flying machines right here. So notice how this flying machine has a part that it's pushing forward, facing the direction you want it to fly. So it's gonna fly that way, pushing all blocks against that wall. I'll allow it to push that big huge clump into that wall rather than trying to push it the long way which it won't be able to do because it only can push 12 blocks. You also want these two pistons here to be on the direction which it's going to be moving. So it's going to be pushing that way, moving this way. That way it's always keeping any lava away from the rest of the flying machine. Everything else, all part of this machine, is hidden behind these pistons. Now the lava here you notice is actually six blocks tall. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
mean that if we want to remove it all, you'll need two fly machines because these only can push four blocks tall. Or you can just remove the top four layers and leave the bottom two layers of lava. It's up to you. The machines are very simple, so it doesn't take much to build up a second one. So this one here is at the same height as the lava for this top piston. And then there's two gaps that it doesn't do, which this one will do. We can go ahead and start this up. We just place a breakable block here, like a button. You can see that it will take off. You don't need to press that button, just place it. And this is the main segment that will go back and forth. It is self-returning, meaning that when it hits any type of wall, it will go backwards. It also has this huge surface area which is pushing any lava as well as blocks all to one end so you don't have to worry about it. It keeps it outside of your nice perimeter. When it comes up to the wall you'll see it will try to push and then it will return taking it all the way back to the station. The actual pusher is pretty simple. The station consists of a couple little different pieces as well just to help move everything forward. So as it comes back in here into its moving station you can see how each of the pieces are moved forward and then it takes off all by itself once again. Now if you would like to stop this fly machine from constantly moving all you have to do is place an immovable block behind this piston here or you place it in between here and then to start it if there's a gap you just place a button onto this observer right here. But if there is no gap like now you see there's no gap you want to place a button on top of this piston and power this. And I'll make it start all over again. And you do want to make sure to stop the machine before it gets close to this docking station. So on the path of the flying machine you notice we do have some lava over here so we want to make sure to clean up any lava that is in the way of it. This is just a little piece so it's not so bad and you see there's a little bit of stone underneath of it. So you want to make sure you clear the way for that. Remove any of this stone here. And obsidian is something that the docking machine nor the pushers can really push so make sure to remove any obsidian ahead of time. So you can see we got some obsidian here and that's why it's important to go ahead and remove any water that you see before it turns into obsidian. Otherwise the machine's just going to hit this and not be able to continue to move. So now our flying machines are getting close to this lava source and we'll watch how well it does at removing all of this. You can see it works really well at removing both the lava as well as the blocks hiding underneath the lava. So the blocks are there because when the quarry was going over top it couldn't destroy any blocks that were being protected by the liquids since TNT can't blast through it. And it's pretty fun to just watch this machine work little by little. Notice if there's an area that's kind of thick it's not able to push it. So if you notice something that's just a little bit thick you can come in here and remove some of these blocks. So that's thin enough so it can actually push it. All in all it does a really good job at removing the majority of the blocks. I'll show you guys how to build this up. I'm just going to build this same one you see over there except I'm going to build a little bit taller one. So I'll put it up two blocks higher. We have uh, pistons that are all kind of surrounding the centerpiece here. And we got ones up here too. And they are being held together by some slime blocks. Then we have this power source which is pointing into that. We have observer pointing into this top piece there. And we also got observer pointing into this bottom piece here. There's also observer pointing back towards the main part of the machine. Now we're going to build the self-returning engine which is a sticky piston there. Uh, we got a bunch of slime blocks coming out of it. Three of them there. There's a lamp, an observer pulling out of the lamp, then it goes into a little fly machine over here. That's the actual inch right there. And then this slime gets powered by an observer too, pointing into it to power that. So this is a little fly machine here, this is a added on piece, and then this is an extension. Now everything else is just to make it move forward. So we got this segment here to help it move forward. Consist of some sticky pistons, sticky piston, slime, and another sticky piston. And then we got 
we got pulling a segment. So there's gonna be a segment here, which is gonna be pulled by that. And then on the segment, there's observer, which is going to be powering a piston. This is what's going to push the majority of this forward. We also got a piston here that is going to push this segment. It's going to be powered by an observer that's going to be sitting back here. And then there's another, another observer pointing this way to power this piston. And there is an observer that points into this piston, just like so. That way it gets powered. So this pushing piece is done. Now we need to make a pushing piece for this side over here. We have a piston facing this way, pushing that piece there. Then we're going to extend this and put another normal piston here. Also be a normal piston here, observer powering that piston. Sticky piston, which is going to be pulling this whole segment. Now we just need two power sources. So we need a power source for this piston as well as this one over here. Well, this one's going to get an observer facing like that. This one's going to get observer facing here. Put that slime back in. So now this pushing piece is done. Now this pulling piece is going to be added. This is the piece that pulls the pushing piece after it's moved one block. So this piston here is going to be pushing a normal block, which is connected by some slime. And this piece right here is just to make it so that the push limit is so big it is unable to keep continually flying this direction. We also have an observer on it. And a double sticky here. We've got two sticky pistons. And the last thing we need to do is come in with a bunch of observers. Three of them in a row like that. And these are just scaffolding blocks. So you can see this one looks just like this one. So if you did everything correctly, it should go ahead and take off. Just place a block there and yep, it works. And then we'll watch it, make sure that it goes back in and then also moves over automatically. So it's coming back now and it should move over by one block and then take off on its own. Yep, everything looks good. Now this does work the best for lava because every time you break a source, it doesn't try to replenish. But you can also use this to remove uh, water sources as well. You just have to kind of remember water likes to come back and refill on itself. They need to like shore up some of the edges. If you do would like to remove a lot of water, I got quite a few other flying machines which I'll link down below that does it much better. Or if you're trying to remove a large amount of lava in like the nether dimension, probably the other flying machines would work better for that as well. And remember guys to share this video with other Minecrafters, especially your favorite YouTubers, so they know how to remove lava easily. I seen Mumbo Jumbo last season of Hermitcraft had a lot of lava in his base. And I try and recommend this to him so he could easily remove it. As oftentimes it's easier to AFK a fly machine than actually do all the manual work. From personal experience running this at the parrot farm on the Protec SMP server, I can assure you that it saves a lot of man hours just by building up these simple fly machines. And now you can see the fly machine is reaching the end here. This is pretty much the last of the lava. Anything else, you can just build a wall to hide it like we did on the Protec SMP server. That'll make the area look much nicer as well. Or you can kind of leave that rough look, which is also pretty cool to show off to any of your friends. Now as the machine actually reaches the very, very edges of the wall, it's just going to crash against the wall eventually. It's not going to be able to push the whole thing. Most likely it'll crash over there by the actual engine. And then this machine will just finish up doing its little bit of work. And then they'll just all crash together. You can tear them down or you can just leave them behind the wall. It doesn't really matter. So that first one went ahead and crashed. And now this one will just finish up its little pieces and it'll crash into the other one. Looks like it's about to crash with the other one. Yep, so now it is completely done. You can see all that lava that was here removed it all. So pretty amazing job, I have to say, for such a small little flying machine. Save you hours and hours of manual work, especially on a very large perimeter, like a full size one. It's like 300 by 300. Remember guys, if you enjoyed this, leave a like on the video as well as check out the playlist down below, which shows over a hundred different videos about simple machines that you can use in your survival world. And as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.